Good afternoon. It's uh, Tuesday, May 21st. Um, this is my third uh, video in a series called Readings and Commentaries. This series is essentially about going back to uh, the texts of different lives of different saints in the Catholic Church, this particular tradition, and viewing their lives as it, what it means for us today in this modern era, um, especially an era of the internet, social media, and trying to interpret, integrate what examples they gave in their life to how we can apply those um, virtues, gifts, teachings, examples to our life today. My first choice was to use a book that was published by me in 2006 while I was living in St. Louis Archdiocese about the life of uh, Padre Pio Pietrosina and the book um, here called The Vision as you can see here 2006 is when it was originally um, the picture on the cover is uh, I got permission from the German uh, printing company called Heidelberg uh, that statue is right in front of their main office and I asked them to use that photo for the book simply because it uh, depicted the battle between St. Pio and the force of evil in his life. That's what started the book itself was um, a reflection on Padre Pio which he, he shared in his letters to his spiritual director and his superiors. Um, I guess he was 15 years old right before he entered the Capuchin Monastery um, and that was the that was the seed from which the the book the vision came about that picture was a that the picture is supposed to be a external uh, or an objective symbol of what Padre Pio felt was going on within himself. So I have today, uh, I have I brought with me um, the the letters. This is uh, taken from his life. The letters of Padre Pio. This is volume one. Um, in the book, I used several letters. Um, in order to use those, I I wrote to the 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 authorities in Pietrosina, the monastery, to quote different things from his letters. And one of the uh, one one note that was written by Padre Pio is in Volume One. And it's called 
the very end of the volume, and it's taken from um, the very last, say, section of the book. It's called Auto Autobiographical Notes by Padre Pio. And in this um, autobiographical note, he says very, very clearly what was taking place in his life at the time before he had this experience, which I found very eye-opening uh, at such a young age to have had this kind of experience given to him by uh, Jesus in order to discern more clearly which would be the right way for him to go because at the time uh, he had mystical experiences from two years old it was phenomenal to read his early life uh, two years old and, and he thought it was so so common uh, to have these visitations from Mary and Jesus and the saints uh, it happened to him quite frequently and as frequently he had these experiences of uh, the evil spirits too that were um, I guess testing him oh God uses uh, God uses everything in creation in our lives to shape us and mold us into who he wants us to be for eternity um as St. Paul says uh, in Ephesians, he chose us in him before the world began. Why? To be holy and blameless in his sight? Wow. So when we see these examples of uh, God raises up particular um, persons as St. Paul said you know different gifts he gives different gifts for different purposes but we all work together because we're all members of the same Lord Jesus and the, and the church um, so to make a long story short, this uh, conflict he was having within himself, uh, even though he had had all these experiences, he was getting to a point where um, he wanted to leave completely the world and dedicate himself fully to a consecrated life, to be totally out of the world um, and in the church as a religious and we'll go into this I'll go into this uh, more later about the stages but uh, right now I'm just keying in on this one experience so I wanted to read it's a precious document I wanted to read today for those of you who are uh, following this uh, series, to understand uh, exactly what was going through his through him his uh, soul. Now this was written down years later under uh, the request of his superiors, the obe under obedience. And this is how he frames what he's about to say about this vision that took place in his life at that particular point before he entered the monastery. I'm, I'm reading word for word in this paragraph. Please bear with me. It says, everything which I am about to relate in the poor account
is set down in virtue of holy obedience. God alone can fully understand the great repugnance with which I write these things. He alone is my witness, and if he had not uh, greatly strengthened me in the respect due to authority, I would have uh, resolutely refused to the point of rebellion and should uh, never have been induced to set down what I'm about to write. Fully aware as I am of the wickedness of this soul which was favored by heaven with such signal graces. May God be pleased to help and strengthen me so that I may overcome the confusion I experience in manifesting what I am about to relate. Unquote. This was written down and later um, this whole passage here was um, published in what's called The Voice Apotropio. This was uh, The Voice came uh, it's very much later uh, in Padre Pio's life was a magazine, it's still being published today, by the Franciscan Capuchin Monks in Pietrosina. Uh, and it publishes everything about the life of Padre Pio, his miracles, the people he knew, and so on. So this whole detailed account of what he's writing, it's already been published, it's well known. Tens of thousands of people have read and understood this, uh, but this was a this was a personal project that I uh, went through, and uh, actually, if somebody wants to look this up, it was uh, published in the in the in the voice of Padre Pio. Um, I guess 1972, number one, January 1972, pages four and five, under the title, The Vision of January 1st, 1903. So, um, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, and as you can tell from the gist of what, what I just read of Padre Pio's words, he was reluctant to share these things, this these account, this account of the vision that he received from from Jesus, from God, about his vocation. It's not something that you want everyone to know. I mean, you know, uh, his, of course, his uh, superiors um, saw that probably later this would be very, very important to, to have documented for his life to show what uh, uh, graces that was given to to him by God. So um, now the next paragraph is what I want to share is very also very important simply because it tells the gist of what brought about this vision. It came about at that particular point in his life. 
So it kind of gives a, a background, um, just as you would see in a, a documentary of someone. You, you find out where the person came from, what the experiences were from their early their childhood, and so on. Well, this gives a background to this particular event. Not all his whole life, but um, just this particular event. So let me quote again. It's from, from the letters, volume one, um, here, for those of you who are just joining, Padre Pio and Pietro Sina. And um, I'd be happy to hear from, from you uh, if you want to share um, about this, feel free to leave comments, whatever, because it's very, very, very interesting. Um, very rarely do we get insights into the lives of the saints. And we have been very fortunate. Um, the church allows um, these documents, document, uh, document the, the life of the saints modern day is very important so it says uh, here is the first extraordinary call to this soul in order that he should leave the world and the path to his own damnation and devote himself entirely to God's service. Let me repeat this again. This is the words of Padre Pio. Written, for those of you just joining, it's a, it's a, um, a note of Padre Pio Pietro Sina written under obedience to his superiors about the intellectual vision he received just a few days before he entered the monastery he was still conflicted inside and this next paragraph gives you a, a, the, the real gist of what was taking place in his soul they're reminding this is a 15 year old boy 15 year old boy still a teenager and living in a small town in in Italy, Pietro Sina. Here is the first extraordinary call to this soul in order that he should leave the world and the path to his own damnation and devote himself entirely to God's service. Continuing the third full paragraph in these notes. This soul had felt strongly from the earliest years the vocation to the religious state. But as he grew older, alas, he began to drink great draughts of this world's vanity. In the heart of this poor creature, a powerful battle began between the increasingly strong vocation on the one hand and a sweet but false delight in the things of the world on the other. Perhaps, or rather without a doubt, with the passage of time, the feelings would have triumphed over the spirit and would have smothered the good seed of the divine call. But the Lord who designed this, desired this soul for himself was pleased to favor this person with the vision 
I'm about to describe the end of end of quote. Again, for those who are just joining, I'm uh, reading directly from um, the the letters of Padre Pio of Pietro Sena to his spiritual directors. Um, and this is uh, an excerpt from volume one regarding uh, the intellectual vision he had when he was 15 years old. Prior to his entering the monastery, Um, yeah so it wasn't it wasn't but uh, a few days later uh, I think he he entered the monastery uh, on the 7th or 8th of that month this was on the 1st when he had the vision on the 22nd of that month, he received the habit, which has uh, become a, a formal postulate in the formation process of the Franciscans. It was a long process. But here he's um, under, under obedience, he went back and wrote down what let's say moved him de definitively to choose clearly was God's call for him to enter the Capuchin uh, life and uh, I think it's marvelous the words he uses here um, the damnation of his soul great draughts he's talking about drinking great draughts of the world's vanity now we who live in the world we realize okay it's a battle there's something you know not right <laughs> anybody anybody who's who's living the life of uh, grace realizes there's some something in the world there's some battle going on, you know, and St. Paul talks about the battle of the the flesh against the spirit. And even Jesus says, you know, the flesh profits nothing. It's the spirit that gives life. And when you have someone like Padre Pio who is saying, you know, he's battling him at 15 year old child, uh, teenager. He's battling with this the sweetness of the, the vanities of the world and then the struggle to leave the world and enter the monastery. Now, I was reflecting the other day, of course, all of us, uh, how many millions and millions uh, of Catholics live in the world? We are called to live in the world. And the Vatican II says, you know, we're called to... Uh, to give witness to the holiness of Christ in the world as laity. But some are called away from the world to live consecrated. That's where your religious uh, contemplatives or fully cloistered or those who live the active life in a monastery like the Dominicans the Jesuits who are very active, um, then are the religious, different religious communities are called to live different stages of the contemplative life and the active life. Some teach and so on. Just as well as the laity, um, some teach, you know, some have, some, uh, embrace the married life and bring uh, God's children into the world co become co-creators 
That's a beautiful thing to be co-creator with God and 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 give birth to you children of the children of God. And then some are teachers, some are pastors, uh, some are, are laity, some work um, in industries, all kinds of industries and professions. There's no limit to what uh, what grace will take you. Uh, but uh, Padre Pio, we're looking at in particular instance of a, a person who was called to religious life. So I, I'm going to wrap up this uh, today uh, by saying, and this is the book that we're. Um, the book was available on Amazon for for many years, and I think it's gone out of print. Um, I had published another something related to it on Padre Pio, but it's not not the same. And I had not republished this. Maybe one day I get around to another edition, but. Right now, uh, these these talks, I'm going to go through the whole thing and try to explicate what I'm saying in the book. Because over the years, since 2006, when it was published, I had many people commenting on it and, uh, you know, kind of questioned. Uh, and I've even sent copies to the monks and Pietro Sena and different people. So... Um, so it's a the book is pretty well known. I mean, it's not a bestseller in, on New York, but uh, it does give a an honest uh, interpretation of that particular event in Padre Pio's life. So hopefully this uh, this this series will bring out some finer points here. So just to recap, uh, today we went back. Um, the first, the first video was from chapter one, and the second one was from chapter two, which ended halfway on chapter two because we we're talking about St. Thomas Aquinas pointing out uh, what distinguishes um, those people who are called in grace to pursue holiness and that keeps them from living in the world the spirit of the world. And now this uh, third uh, uh, lecture, it basically, basically we took uh, two texts, one from Poulain, which we'll go get to later, and the other one from the letters of Padre Pio. Next time I hope to use the, uh, the Poulain book, The Grace of Interior Prayer, to go back and to understand more clearly how the mystical writers, the theologians in the church, St. Teresa, St. John of the Cross, those mystical authors, um, how they perceive what is intellectual vision, how it should be perceived, and so on, and the, the precaution precautions that the church gives uh, to those living in faith when they receive these gifts and how a spiritual director is very, very important at these times. So for now, uh, thank you very much for, for tuning in. And if you have a comment, leave a comment if you want to. Uh, if you want to subscribe, I will let you know next time I upload something. And uh, or if I go, if I stream, I get a chance on the weekend um, out of my regular work, and I stream, I will let you know also. So for now, thanks again. God bless all of you. Uh, let's keep ourselves, keep one another in prayer support on this journey. And God's be to you all. Thank you.